Hello my fellow crafters, Michelle here. I have a Christmas wreath for you today. In today's crafting adventure, I'm going to show you how to make this adorable Christmas gnome wreath. I was so excited when I went into my local Dollar Tree and I found the new Garden Steak Gnomes for Christmas. They're absolutely gorgeous and made very well. I fell in love with this one dressed as Santa and knew I had to use it in a Christmas wreath. Let me show you how to make it. To get started on today's project, you're going to need a 14 inch working wreath form. Now, if you have not seen me put one of these together, I will link a short video in the description box below that will show you how to make one. And if you don't have access to the description box, you can find it in my playlist under tips and tricks for beginners, how to make a working wreath form. You're also going to need one roll of 10 inch by 10 yard deco mesh. This one is silver and there are no metallic strips in this one and I picked this up at papermart.com and I got it for $1.65. Now I did have this in my stash for about a year or two so they may be uh, more expensive but I thought that was a really great price for a 10 inch by 10 yard deco mesh roll, $1.65. I have my mesh unrolled and my wreath form is ready to go. We're going to be uh, doing two different methods on the base today. The first one is going to be the poof method and then we're going to fill in with the curl method and you're only going to need one roll of 10 inch by 10 yard deco mesh to finish your base. So this is a nice budget friendly base if you're using a 10 inch deco mesh. To start, you wanna take your ends and scrunch them all together. I'm gonna start here in the center. I'm gonna place your ends into your first pipe cleaner on the center ring. Pull nice and tight and give a good twist or two. Okay. Then we're going to be measuring our poofs at eight inches. And you wanna to start to measure your poofs right where you tied it down. So lay that down, measure out to eight inches, pinch. And then where you pinched, Go into your next pipe cleaner in the center, place it and give a good twist. Now you wanna to continue to do that all the way around the center until you get back to the pipe cleaner where you started. For your convenience, in the description box below is a detailed list of all the tools and materials I used to complete this Christmas gnome wreath. Now I'm back where I started. Now I'm gonna move down to the lower or outer ring. And that's really easy, you just grab it and drop down to the pipe cleaner that's directly below. Give a good twist. And then you continue around the outer ring doing the same thing, measuring at eight inches, pinching and then placing into the next pipe cleaner. Now this should use up half your roll, and then the second half of the roll we'll be doing in the curl method to fill in. I have completed the poof method on the base, and I went through and opened up all my poofs, and that just means to go in to separate and open it up. 
Okay, so that's ready to go. You also want to pull your pipe cleaners up straight. We're going to be adding more to them. Now with the rest of your roll, you want to clean up your end. You want to cut the rest of the roll into strips at 8 inches. I have all of my mesh cut and now I'm going to cut my ribbon and I found this absolutely adorable gnome ribbon at Walmart. This is 2.5 inches at 40 feet and it was $7.98. I really do love it. It has that gray and white background with the really pretty dark gray and red gnomes. Very cute. And then I'm also going to be using this ribbon which I picked up at uh, Costco. This is another roll of their wonderful $6.99 ribbon. And this is, I believe, two and a half inches at 50 yards. And I like this one a lot. It's sheer, but has a good enough amount of color that it doesn't just fade away, but not too much. So I really like this one. I want to add some red, but I don't want like a solid red. You will want to cut your ribbon into strips at 12 inches and you will need 12 pieces of each. Once you have your ribbon cut, you'll want to dovetail your ends. Now I like to uh, stack mine, I just put the two together. And I don't like a real strong dovetail, so I only come down maybe about a half inch and cut from the center to the point. And then that gives me just a really pretty nice little dovetail. You'll want to do this to all of your ribbon. Now to fill in our base, we'll be doing two different bundles. The bundle that has the ribbon, you'll only be adding one curl. You don't want to curl it too tight. It should roll up nicely for you. Then add one piece of each ribbon. Now at every pipe cleaner around the center, you will be adding a curl and ribbon. Place it in between the pipe cleaners, pull nice and tight. Give a couple good twists. Then you want to trim your pipe cleaners, leave about a half inch. And then push your pipe cleaners down. Grab your curl and your ribbon and kind of just pull everything up. And you want your bundle to run crossways, not this way. Running it crossways is going to give you a much fuller and thicker base and it will leave the center open. If you run them this way, you'll not have a very thick base and you'll have a lot of mesh crammed in the center. So make sure that when you place in your bundles that you're placing them sideways. Now across from the center, on the ones on the outside, these are the ones that you're only going to put a curl. Now depending on how many cuts you were able to get, if you have enough, put two curls where you don't have a ribbon. If not, just put one. Sometimes I get extra uh, pieces where I can do two curls, sometimes I don't. It all depends on how I measured and how the roll was. I'll put your two curls together and again you want to place them in sideways, not vertical.
Okay, so then on the next one on the outside, I will put a curl and ribbon because there isn't going to be one on the inside. This way it, it kind of mixes it up as you move around. So you have one on the inside, one on the outside, one on the inside, one on the outside. It makes it nice and evenly distributed all the way around your wreath. I'm going to continue to get my ribbon and my curls in my base. When I'm complete, I'll come back and we'll move forward and decorate. I have my base completed. I have all my curls and my ribbon in. And look at how beautiful that looks. Nice and full off of one roll of 10 inch by 10 yard deco mesh. And if you can pick it up for $1.65, that makes it very affordable, even more affordable than using Dollar Tree mesh. Go ahead and set this aside. You're also going to need a laser cut word, believe. You can pick this up in the Crafter Square section. They come in a package of two. You want to get one good coat of a red paint. I used Folk Art Lipstick Red. When I went into my Dollar Tree, I was very excited to see that they got in new Garden Steak Gnomes. I really fell in love with this one, dressed as Santa. This is the one I'm going to be using on our wreath today. Now sometimes I have a hard time getting the steak off. If it doesn't want to pry off easily, you can always break it off. Looks like this one's going to come off pretty easily. To get the sign ready to be attached to the wreath, I'm going to glue on three pipe cleaners onto the back. Lay in a nice daub of glue, put down your pipe cleaner. Top it off with a little bit more glue. And then recently, I like to put a little bit of ribbon over the top. This just gives it a little bit of extra security to make sure that my hot glue does not fail. You want to make sure your glue fully sets up before you attach it to your wreath. I'm going to place my sign here on top of my mesh, slightly off center. And then I'm going to place my believe here on the side. Just play with the placement until you find where you like it. To attach the believe, you're going to need some floral wire. I just took a piece of floral wire, wrapped it around the top of the L, twisted it in the back so I can attach it to my wreath. If a little bit of wire bothers you, you can always touch it up after you get it on your wreath with your red paint. To attach your sign and believe, simply take your pipe cleaners and your floral wire, separate the mesh until you get to the back where the wired wreath form is and attach it to the wired wreath form. You can attach it anywhere on that wreath form that you need to, to get your gnome and your believe to sit where you want them to. I have my gnome and believe attached. Once you get them attached, you want to go in and arrange your ribbon. Pull it out from behind the sign so that you can see it. You also want to make sure some of the ribbon goes down underneath the word believe. Now that your believe is wired on, just use a couple drops of hot glue to get it in the correct position and to hold it there. Now we're going to add the final element, these beautiful red and silver Christmas balls. 
They come in a package of 15 at Dollar Tree. Simply add some hot glue to the top and then nestle them into your wreath. I usually like to put some in the center of my ribbon bundles. It helps to open up the ribbon bundle and makes the ornament stand out. And here you go, we are all done. I have all of my Christmas ornaments glued in. I think they were the perfect final touch for this wreath. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up and show me some love in the comments. And if you know anyone else who would enjoy my content, please share it with them. Thanks so much for stopping by. It's always a pleasure to see you. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.